Hi there, Alex from Chaos Flow again. So in this tutorial, uh, we're going to go through Planck's pump. Now, Planck's pump is uh, basically most of the work on your wall plane. Okay, uh, there are so many tricks within this, um, but I don't want to go into tricks right now because the number of tricks is virtually infinite at the moment, and that's from the beginner. So we'll just start with the concept. Um, so that you have some basic tools to get uh, moving with it and uh, and then you'll see that tricks evolve naturally and um, we're gonna uh, there's going to be a, a location on the website where we can start compiling tricks start naming tricks uh, as a community there's too many for me to handle on my own and I'd like everybody to be involved in that process so I'm just starting with the concepts and we'll look at the tricks later um, but yeah but the Planck's pump is one of my favorites. Yeah, it's got the most amount of creativity and when you get a really good run, it just feels phenomenal. So, uh, very simply, it's the same as um, uh, the Fibonacci fuel, um, but you're working on the wall plane, so you're also having to contend with gravity. Yeah, very simple. Um, and you're just, and it's, uh, and it's separated from stick ball duality because you're trying to actually keep it always spinning on this plane okay now this will take some practice and the way I work it is I work in runs okay meaning that for as long that I am aware of what I'm doing and that each movement is controlled uh, whether that be through um, um, pumping a, a pump itself which is when you create a spin um, or catching a spin um, or re-pumping which is when you do multiple spins um, um, or whether you're doing a stall which is when you uh, do a pump uh, an, a, a perfect negative pump and that causes the stick to stop spinning on the on it on it to stop spinning in this direction but free but but still spin on the rope so it ends up doing something like this yeah? and um, these <laughs> have yet to fully understand but uh, all I know is that um, in the same way that with your hovercraft you can create resonance by um, yeah uh, through 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 uh, turning uh, moving your hand at the correct speed and that creates web resonance between the spinning of the stick and the spinning of your hand that causes it to, to fuel more. Um, the same is applicable on the pump, um, but with negatives, uh, which is when you have negative resonance or unresonance. Uh, it will cause stalls, and it will cause it to stop spinning um, on uh, um, on its own plane, but maintain its spin on the horizontal. Anyway, this all evolves naturally. So, very simply, uh, Planck's pump in its most basic form looks like this. Yeah, easy, no? Now, what I mean by a run, okay, is you'll see that I have kept it spinning all of this time and I am not speaking clearly because I am intensely focused on getting that maintaining that spin now ah, there we go and there's the end of my run yeah okay so that's the concept of a run and the basic concept of the pump pump um, very much the same as, as with a hovercraft and creating the resonance it's just you're also having to contend with gravity and one other thing you have to contend with is the stick itself the rope as it, so let's say if we're spinning on this plane, so if I was to spin in this direction, then you will see that um, the head is always, and the head and tail are both trying to hit the rope continuously, uh, which is just frustrating. So you will find that it is much better to work on both your wall planes. So if I'm pumping in this direction, moving from side to side gives me a lot more um, uh, much less probability that the stick will be uh, will hit the rope, um, which obviously gives you longer runs, much longer runs, much better feeling, and I feel the audience really feel understand and feel what a run is too. So once you can, once you're um, playing around with the pump, which is very simply just yanking it when it's at 90 degrees ish, um, which is simply a case of timing. Um, Later models, uh, some models after this, we're going to have color coding so that you know which side's the head and which side's the tail. Um, I recently, all of my play ones were like that, um, but I gave my last personal one to my brother um, and all the other ones were sold. So we 
we're using this for now. <laughs> um, but I will, I will have future videos to display them later. Now, um, when you're adding in um, spins, so that, that's with the rope static underneath you, okay? When you want to start adding circles like this, then it gets a bit more confusing, but it's still the same principle. So if I'm spinning, in, if I'm a poi spinner, then I can make these perfect circles. And I, what I mean by a perfect circle is that um, you're maintaining that the head is always in the middle. Make it as small as, oh, whoa, whoa, I lost it there. Sorry, that's my nature. The head is always in the middle, and then the, the, the tail, sorry, I'm losing it again. I'm not a poi spinner, that's why. Um, and the tail always makes the biggest circle, okay? Now, um, this is a great way to really give it a good whack. When you've got it at this point, when it's coming round, at any point, whether you're here or here or at the top or behind you, um, you just need to pull the rope, uh, yank the rope in one direction or the other to create a spin. Okay, so if I show you, so if I go, for example, um, forwards, whoop. yeah, this is why it's called Schrodinger's snap. It's got its own idea on what it wants to do. So, going forward, if I just let go on the upward part, it will naturally spin, yeah? Just create its own spin because at that point, you release, um, the tail has more energy than the head, so the tail spins out of the way, okay? Now, if you do the same thing again, get back to do the same thing again, but I yank down, oops, excuse me, let's try that again. Uh, but I give it a, a little yank down, then you can create a lot more spin. And the thing is, now when you when you do that, when you give it a good pump, which is something like that, you then want to give the rope slack. Okay, just as with the hovercraft, um, the closer that you are to the stick, the more you interfere with the spin that it's already got. You're taking this energy out of its spin. The further you are away, the more you're allowing it to do what it wants to do. Same principle here. Once you pump it and you give it a good spin, you want to give it slack. Let it do what it wants to do. Now, the fun thing about really fast spins and runs is that once you give it a good pump, you've got to try and catch it. <laughs> and that works very simply. That um, as it's spinning, um, you want to try and spot. You need to spot the head. Know which one the head is. Why we will have color coding. Uh, this comes with practice, and it can also be done. I can do this blindfolded. So it is also just the feeling in the rope. Yet again, stick ball duality. Think back to those moments of, of uh, clicking when it all made when it made sense when you felt it through the rope. Um, it's the same principle again. Um, and so as it's spinning, 